Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy and I am here today to present to you an Iranian developed game called Dark Years by RKS Entertainment and published by KISS Limited. Now believe it or not, I'm actually familiar with RKS Entertainment. They previously put out a point and click adventure game called Murder in Tehran's Alleys in 1933. And yeah, that game was really bad. From a technical and translation standpoint, I honest to God think all the developer did was pump in the Persian text into Google Translate, click change to English, and copy pasted whatever came out. But hey, that's been a few years. Maybe RKS has upped their game. After all, they got a publisher now, so clearly someone found some merit in this title. And just speaking generally now, Iran's become a pretty happening place in the video game industry. I'm seeing more and more developers come out of that country, and I always welcome more diversity in the video game industry. So hey, let's check out this game and see if it's any better than their previous works. Yeah, this menu screen's not giving me a great first impression. It kind of reminds me of early 2000 tech demos for 3D game engines. So let's pause it right here, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone between, and soak in this screen, because my word, there's so many interesting things going on. For starters, in the lower right corner, we got a dead guy who's kind of clipping through the ground a little bit. But hey, whatever. That could have been what killed him. After all, there's a pool of blood. Then we got a cop whose face is blocked by the Persian stamp that says Black Years. I'm assuming that that's how you say it in Persian. It said Dark Years, it's Black Years, but... Okay. And in the middle of the screen, we got a cop car that looks right out of the 70s, which is kind of futuristic for this game, considering it's set in the 50s. And right behind it, well, we got what appears to be, I think, Buckingham Palace? I don't know, I'm not English. And Big Band right there. That seems a bit interesting. And also, you can tell they're just objects made smaller to look like they're in the distance. It's kind of sloppy work. And frankly, there's just a weird filter over all the objects here that give it a strange kind of we're in a rave sort of mode. Yeah. But hey, as the old saying goes, don't judge a game by its title screen. So let's start this puppy up and see what we're in store for. Now, if part of me wants to say, hey, it looks like they're using their storyboard sketches for the cutscene. But then another part of me realizes this is probably the most impressive graphics in the game. Yeah, in lieu of animation, just shake an image. Oh my god, guys, I'm being shot at! Ah! Well, I'm not entirely sure. I'm thinking that this lady we saw with the trench coat dude got shot for reasons we don't know yet. Oh yeah, she did, and our hero's sad about it. I'm assuming they knew each other. Whoa, let's wait a minute there. Is this dude missing a hand? Alright, so he just kind of fell, faded, and flipped. Alright, yeah. Still don't know if he's missing a hand, though. Yeah, just... Keep hovering over this guy. I don't quite know why he's relevant. I would have liked to have a longer look at what exactly he wrote, but hey, look at this guy just kind of hanging out here. That's important to the plot. Well, that was a really informative intro cinematic. I learned that a lady died and a dude with a spray paint can died. Yeah, these are dark years indeed. From there, we get a kind of long loading screen, and then we're thrusted back into the action. Oh boy, this guy doesn't speak English, and there's no subtitles. Wonderful! I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Now I'm pressing the buttons, because they're in English. But anything else? God only knows, or maybe Persians, or people who speak Persian. Yeah, great fun, isn't it? Now, the developer promised there would have been an English dub by now. But as you can see, that hasn't happened yet as of this recording. Though, maybe it will in the future. And if that happens, I don't know if I want to replay this, honestly. But hey, after having no idea what's going on and pressing a bunch of button prompts on screen, we get another loading screen and more of the game to play. Huzzah!
Now, normally I'm not so critical about graphics, but my word, this is an ugly looking game. It just does not seem done. The perspectives are terrible, textures don't exist, it's just ugly and amateurish. I'm sorry, but it has to be said. Yeah, we're just kind of hovering on our character for a really long time. Oh, sudden camera change. So a letter flashes onto our screen and it's written in terrible broken English. From what I can gather though, we're a journalist and we're paying 20,000 pounds for some precious information. And 20,000 pounds in 1953 was a lot of money. Hell, 20,000 pounds in 2015 is a lot of money. So obviously this is very, very precious information. And we have attached to us a photo page that I'm not sure how to access. So the game begins to go through a tutorial right above the confusing letter. And yeah, the letter's still in our face, and yeah, I don't know how to take it down, but whatever, the controls are pretty standard. Waz to move, ship to run, it's pretty self-explanatory. So it's almost midnight, and our hero informs us that he needs to find someone who knows his way around this area. In particular, his way, because we ain't talking to no ladies. Although, after looking at this image, I gotta wonder, how exactly did this guy arrive here? Did he take a boat? Yeah, the camera's really bad in this game. Now, articulating how bad a camera is in a video game, it's always a pretty difficult thing, even more so for the controls. But in this game, yeah, how best to describe it? Well, basically the camera seems like it was built for a game that's a lot faster than this one. It is very, very, very sensitive, oversensitive, and it's incredibly difficult to actually get a good look at anything because the camera's always swaying around. And the controls, my word, the controls are awful. The character doesn't move left, right, forward, back. It kind of just instantly teleports into whatever direction you're pressing. So if you want to go right, there's no transition. He just kind of teleports right and you start going right. And also, he only moves in right angles or in horizontal and vertical lines. In a way, he controls like a terrible racing game. So to actually move anywhere, a lot of the times you have to press forward and left to kind of make him veer left and press, you know, forward and right to kind of get him to veer right. Again, it's like controlling a terrible racing game. Yeah, and at certain random points in the game, it appears like the camera needs shock absorbers for how much it's shaking. We're just crossing a bridge, but the camera is just spazzing out and having none of it. Oh yeah, the game likes to pop up random button prompts for you, because that's the only time you can interact with objects is when you're prompted to. Salam, bacha. Shoma ahle hami malasti. master. So we get more terrible and nonsensical dialogue, but hey, at least this character's supposed to be drunk, so it's a bit understandable that he may be slurring his words. I guess our character's a teetotaler, because he's not willing to interact with these drunks beyond hearing their nonsensical words. So we carry on further in the adventure, and oh my god, just the graphics. My word, folks, my word. Folks, this wall right here is clearly having some transparency issues. Someone done goofed. I have no idea how this made it into the final version of the game. It's really blatant. And it's not like this is some off the map location. Nah, you have to go past this building. So I just can't see how anyone let this slip. Although to be fair, the developer does seem to be aware of this. And they keep promising a forthcoming patch. But hey, I'll believe it when I see it. So our hero asks this dude about a lighthouse. I'm not sure how that's relevant. Maybe in the original Persian he mentions a lighthouse, but in the English version, no one talking about no lighthouse that I know of. So this dude gives us an address to the lighthouse? But hey, his name's also Fast Bro, because he does everything rapidly. <laughs> Yeah, that translation's a wee bit rough. But whatever, Fast Bro gives us an address that's utterly and completely useless because he never tells us where the address is. And as far as I can tell, there's no clear street markers in this game. So basically, we had a useless dialogue sequence that promised us something that we can't even use and is not helpful in any way, shape, or form. What a wonderful start. From here, we engaged in a wonderful journey throughout a world filled with jittery windows, confusing shadows, and odd map design with invisible walls to keep you from going to areas you can't go to. But eventually, and by sheer dumb luck, I found where I needed to go. Oh, 
بالاخره تونستم خونه رو پیدا کنم بهتره در بزنم و منتظر دوست ناشناس اون باشم او oh مای گاد جاست او مای گاد وات وات هپند تو هیز آرم آی جاست هاو دز دس ایون هپن هاو دز دس میک ایت انتو دی فاینل ورژن اف دی گیم هاو دو یو نات نوتیس یور کاریکتر از بریکین هیز آرم هیتین ا دور <laughs> oh my god and thank god they bought her to translate the knock knock otherwise i wouldn't know he was knocking on the door <laughs> oh my word but hey no one's home and we need to break into the house using convoluted adventure game mechanics because at its heart this is an adventure game a really bad broken one but it's still an adventure game I'm not sure if you can gather up these items before you know you need them or not, but whatever. We're back at the very beginning of the map and we have to bring down a boat because we need like a pulley hook and some rope to break into a house. But hey, there's a little puzzle here and it's really hard to control. I don't know how they made it difficult to control a simple wire puzzle, but they found a way. So with the items in hand, we break into the house. Yeah, it's another mini game that controls really weirdly and convolutedly, but hey, With trial and error, I'm able to bust in. Oh, poor camera, it just could not handle going from inside to outside smoothly. So we wander around someone's house that doesn't look like anyone's house I've ever seen before, but instead a poorly 3D modeled one, and we find some paper that has some rather bizarre kind of propaganda written in broken English all over it, and then we go upstairs with some difficulty because of the camera. Who has a house built like this? Just, wow. And oh yeah, those stairways that lead further up, they're purely aesthetic as far as I know. You can't go up them. And I tried. Trust me, I tried really hard. So, with nowhere else to go, I walked into another bizarrely designed room and discovered a dead body. Who I think was of the dude we were supposed to meet and pay the 20,000 pounds for his precious information. And yeah, you can tell this window's seen some stuff. It's still shaking from the murder. کسی این کارو کرد انگار دست و یومش شکستن ولی چرا مشتش بسته است Yeah, my camera kind of got stuck here but eventually I found a safe این که یه تابلوی معمولیه پس چرا توجه مقتول رو جلب کرد آها Yeah, do you just use psychic powers to gently slide the picture down and reveal the safe And of course, I didn't have the code for it right off the bat. But after wandering around for a bit longer, I found a picture, and it had some numbers on it. So I figured it was a pretty safe bet that one of these sets of numbers would be the safe combination. And sure enough, it was the date that was on the photo. And oh yeah, controlling this little safe puzzle is really confusing. There's multiple angles, and you have to do weird stuff with the mouse to make it turn left and right. But either way, the safe's combination is 1944. But after wandering around for a bit longer, I found a picture, and it had some numbers on it. So I figured it was a pretty safe bet that one of these sets of numbers would be the safe combination. And sure enough, it was the date that was on the photo. Oh my god, yes, those poorly modeled cars are not from the 50s. My god, you could see through them. Okay, let's just cue the goofy music. I cannot take this game seriously. So, somehow a bomb went off. I guess maybe when we opened the safe it triggered a bomb, but at the same time too the cops showed up, so it's all sorts of confusing. Okay, so the police are taking us in, and oh my god, they did not even model a gun in the cop's hand, but he's acting like he has a gun. 
Maybe they realize that English police don't carry guns and then they forgot to change the model, but oh well. Well, after that delightful bit of nonsensical mess, we get a lovely showcase of the game's excellent character modeling and animation. Yeah, he pulls the phone out of his pocket, presses a button, and it somehow it starts calling the guy. Now, I'm not that old, but I do know phones like that do not work that way. So we got this other dude now, and what's going on with his hand? What's going on with this whole scene? How did anyone think this was acceptable for a commercial game that you have to pay like $20 for? <laughs> oh god, they got my money. So these two guys are chit-chatting about how a leading journalist who worked for Men's Daily Newspaper was assassinated. Oh yeah, and the one dude hangs up on the other guy midway through his sentence. What a jerk! So thus concludes part one of my over-analysis of Dark Years. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between. I have been some guy, and hopefully I will be in the future. So have a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening.